Deputy Minister of Social Development, Dr. Henrietta Bokhupane Zulu, has opened Elanstrom Community Care Centre, this in Skukune district in Limpopo. The centre is said to benefit orphaned and vulnerable children in that community. The Deputy Minister, Bokhupane Zulu, joins me now. Uh, Deputy Minister, a pleasure to have you on the programme this afternoon. Uh, can you firstly elaborate on the specific services and the support being provided by the Ilansduen Community Centre to orphaned and vulnerable children in Skukune, and how these services are tailored to meet the unique needs of this community. Okay, uh, thanks so much. Let's first appreciate and show gratitude to the German Development Bank that has given us the money to build 17 of these centres. So Ilansduen was the 17th one. Um, the centers are intended to actually intervene in a lot of our social ills and um, Islands Durang has a lot of challenges as a community. The first one in the country is the highest in terms of incest. There's a big problem there. So uh, the center will be having child and youth care workers that would go and do family interventions and facilitate a lot of things. There's the ECT because at the moment You've got 11 year old having a child with their father, and then the child doesn't get an ID because no one wants to go to home affairs. So the child and youth care workers supported by the social workers will be able to make sure that these children have papers, um, there's safe play parks so children can play, there's a computer lab, there's a men's lounge where men can actually have discussions as an attempt to end gender-based violence. There's lecture halls, there's an amphitheater, um, there's also a, a luncheon club for older persons and a youth development skills center. So it's social development services in one big center. What yeah. is accommodated is also offices of what counselors, because half the time communities don't know where to find the counselor. Um, it's important to also say these are built in rural areas, all 17 of them, led by traditional leaders. The intention is that rural people must also get the same services that those who have access in our township and cities get. But are there some success stories, if you will, or examples of how community care centers uh, like Ilansduan have positively impacted the lives of children and their families, especially in rural areas. And what lessons can be drawn from these experiences? Let me talk about the one in the, because we've got uh, five in the Northwest, we've got six in KZN and six in uh, Limpopo. I'll pick up, for example, in Jebe, which is sitting uh, in uh, KZN uh, under the Buchelezi tribe. We, you, we have um, trained, for example, more than um, 80 young people on artificial intelligence as well as um, in what advanced computer programming. Mm. And these kids had, these young people had to walk three to four hours to reach uh, the center. Um, there's also a, the community a nutrition development center where everyone that, like older persons living alone, are able to eat one nutritious meal a day. You've got children that are passing uh, in flying colors because of the MTN electronic school, because they sponsor the labs for us. Mm. Um, we do homework supervision. We, we in Lechaking in the Northwest, we had a partnership with Huawei, for an example, and we trained um, you know, young people, more than 180, to actually do fiber laying. Um, we follow up uh, members of the family. Amongst the things we look at uh, is um, gender-based violence in the family, it's alcohol and drug abuse. In Khrut Mariko, if you can look at the statistics on gender-based violence, for an example, since we introduced uh, the uh, men's lounge, to fight gender-based violence and created a space for men and boys to champion change. The figures and statistics of one child pregnancies, teenage pregnancies, and gender-based violence has literally uh, gone down by more than 60%. Mm. So the intention of these centers, it's 
like a one-stop center. Now we'll be introducing hard skills and soft skills that the economy needs uh, across the, the training component of these centers. So there is a lot of success. Um, in Swaz Reneke as well, in Kawung um, in the Northwest, there's a space now where the tribal council can actually have the tribal court while they are waiting for the tribal court to actually be constructed. And each and every area where we have the CCC, yeah. there's a lot of success. I guess this also then begs the question as to uh, in what ways does the establishment of community centers actually complement existing child protection interventions and services as well? And how does it contribute to the broader goals outlined in South Africa's uh, national strategic plan for uh, HIV, TB and STIs as well? Uh, let me also say that the first thing is that the, the CCCs are run by NPOs that, one, implement children's programs, older persons' programs, that are also doing uh, testing for TB and HIV, that does referrals, that also tests for a prostate and testicular cancer. And because it's run by MPOs, communities have more access to that without delay. We fund uh, the running of the centers as DSD, and then the, the NPO that the community has chosen. So we don't impose uh, send, uh, NPOs on communities. There's an AGM, and the community would say, we've got three NPOs. They will put it in order of priorities, and then we'll do the auditing. This complements child protection because, firstly, children have safe spaces to play, and they're allowed to be children. Mm. Um, children have access to services in terms of social workers because each center has uh, three or four social workers. Um, families uh, uh, are supported because we are implementing the Families Matter program. The intention is to reconstruct uh, the family, and I think uh, you would uh, invite us to talk more about this particular program. And also to say that, you know, uh, when we work together, you've got, we train uh, wives of traditional leaders to actually take care of the children within uh, the areas where their husbands or wives govern. And in the training, we remind them that, look, guys, you cannot look only after your children. Yeah. You have the responsibility to look after all children. Uh, so given what you say, uh, working together, and also this partnership with the German state-owned uh, development uh, corporation, uh, what role does international collaboration play in enhancing the effectiveness and sustainability of initiatives like this uh, at uh, the Ellensdorn Community Care Center, uh, particularly in terms of financial and uh, technical support? A lot. I think um, without international support, there's a number of programs PSD would never be able to implement. And I can pick up, I think by now, South Africa knows Chomi, um, the 10 to 14 year old program, South Africa knows YOLO, the 15 to 24 year old, um, you know, all of these programs are supported, for example, by USAID. Um, and USAID, we've got a government to government program. So whether it's the German Development Bank, whether it's USAID, um, whether it's the CDC in terms of supporting our program initiatives, every cent counts and every technical support. We've got an agreement as DSD on issues of children with disabilities, respite care services, uh, with uh, the, the Japan, uh, JICA, the Japan International Cooperation and Development. So we have a lot of partnerships um, with different countries four different development uh, areas. And we appreciate that because our budget, the 80% of social development's budget goes towards paying of grants. And the actual implementation of programs, we actually need more partners, but I would be wrong if I don't acknowledge South Africa's private sector as well, because we partner with them on a lot of programs. So whether it's international, whether it's national, whether it's local, every support counts and every little 
will take South Africa to a better country. We're spending the next two weeks uh, in Amajuba, in Newcastle, in Madlangeni, Danhauser. So we're there. I just arrived there. Mm. And we say, South Africa, we are here to actually change the lives of many people. Not just the visit, but we'll be dealing with hardcore service delivery issues, amongst them ensuring there's water so through the district development model since I am the champion allocated to Amajuba. So follow us from today until my birthday, the 11th of March, and you will see service delivery in action. Well, all the best with your projects and, uh, of course, your upcoming birthday as well, Deputy Minister. Uh, that's uh, Deputy Minister Henrietta Bukhupane Zulu, uh, shedding a bit more light on the vital role played by community care centres like Ilansdun in providing essential services and support uh, to orphaned and vulnerable children.